This week on Sneak Previews Goes Video, a new tape with the best of Eddie Murphy's skits from Saturday Night Live, a new edition of The Wizard of Oz with some rare home movie footage, a charming musical comedy from writer-director Carl Reiner about a British coal miner with dreams of Hollywood glory, and a humiliating re-edited version of a very early Sylvester Stallone film, plus the new movies at your local theater that are worth making a special trip. All this and more on this week's Sneak Previews Goes Video. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. Welcome to the debut of Sneak Previews Goes Video. It's the first weekly show highlighting the exciting world of home video. And I'm Michael Medved, and looking at this week's new video releases, our first category is drama. And naturally, the obvious choice here is Rain Man, last year's Oscar winner that's already setting some home video records. How do you know this car? Definitely know this car. Of course, Dustin Hoffman's performance as the childlike adult with the amazing mental gifts is a miracle of acting. But when you take this tape home, you should also watch for the superb work by the often underrated Tom Cruise as a selfish, yuppie hustler who here discovers for the first time that he has an older brother in an institution. What is it with this guy? Hey, who's your mother? Eleanor Babbitt. Eleanor? Died January 5th, 1965, after a short... Who the hell are building. you? Uh-oh. Huh? Oh, wait a second. Where are you going? 13 minutes to Judge Wapner, the Wapner? people's court. Hold oh, on, wait a second here. I want to ask you a question. But you're a witness. You're going to real. Participants are not... Active. Hey, I'm talking to you. Casey Penny, California... Bruner! Court. Who is this guy? We dismissed him. Raymond is your brother. Now the dispute settled here on form. People's court. My brother? I, court. I don't have a brother. Titanic performance, Michael. It loses absolutely nothing on a video screen. So we agree that Rain Man is worth renting. But if Rain Man's not available, my choice for drama is Beaches, a compelling story about a long-standing friendship between two different sorts of women, Bette Midler and Barbara Hershey. But all friendships, of course, have their rough spots now and then. And here, with their lives going in different directions, they pull away at each other's defenses and have it out. What the hell is going on here? Would you please lower your voice? No, I won't. I want to know what's eating you. You have been a total ever since you came to New York. I could say the same thing about you. I've simply been reacting to you. Oh, for God's sake, don't you get it? We've grown apart. It happens to the best of friends. It's happened to us. We might as well face it. You're ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. We haven't grown apart. You've fallen apart. I don't think I care to pursue this. So long, Cece. Why you care? Stuck up little witch. When your father died, he took the best of you with him. Look, don't make a scene, all You're right? trying to be an interesting person for a while, but look at you now. You've completely reverted to type. You're nothing but a small-minded little snob these days. How would a pretentious little climber like you know that? Experience. Experience? And I know what's eating you, too. Oh, really? What's eating me? Plain old-fashioned jealousy. Jealousy? Jealousy? What am I jealous of? Your insane ambition? No, no, it must be your new money. No, I... I'm jealous of your marriage of convenience. That must be it. My what? Aren't you afraid you got him by default? Jeff, I'm afraid I can't share your enthusiasm for Beaches. I mean, Bette Midler's terrific, her singing is fine, her performance is great, but the plot is so contrived, it's so melodramatic, and it has to have one of the most hokey, predictable sorts of endings in recent years. I know why you didn't like this movie, because they remind you of you and me disagreeing about <laughs> movies, right? Two Hardly. people living on different coasts who occasionally have their spats. I got into this movie, I thought Bette Midler's performance is devastating, it's just as powerful here in the video version, and the film really worked on me. I knew what was happening, I I knew it was going to come at the end, but it is a film I won't soon forget. I don't know how all that was lost upon you. Well, it's a weepy, not my first choice. Actually, instead of Beaches, my choice as a drama, as an alternative to Rain Man, would be Little Dorrit. Now, this is an epic adaptation of one of Charles Dickens' greatest novels. It's very rare that a movie will actually work better on video than it did in theaters, but this picture, I think, is one of those exceptional cases. 
Welcome. Little Dorrit has released his two separate videos, each one nearly three hours long. And what I like is the fact that at home, you can savor this story at your own leisurely pace. It's very much like reading a novel. Alec Guinness won an Oscar nomination for his role as a fallen gentleman struggling to maintain dignity in debtor's prison, here receiving a visitor and hoping for a handout. I have received many testimonials of many degrees of value, and they have always been acceptable. Unfortunately, though nobody's fallen, you know, but I never was more pleased than with this one. Fanny, mm. my daughter, Fanny, my son, Tiff. Fanny, come to the The girls are for visitors to retire, but there's plenty of time, plenty of time. This makes you too depressing. Good night, Father. You handsomely say so, no? Plenty of time. Hello. Hi, hi, Mr. Clennon. Hi, do you have that? Allow me to see you downstairs, Mr. Clennon. No, 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 on any account. The friend. Allow me. Deeply. Deeply. Mike, now I've got you. Because this picture, I saw it in the theater, it was so boring and so long and tedious. And if the best you can say about a video is, well, you, if you take it in little doses at your own pace, it's like reading a book, and that way it works better, not to make fun of the way you said it. <laughs> it is really boring. Come out with it. Say it's good for you and it's noble like extra homework. No, no, no. What I'm saying, Jeff, is that it is too much for anything, no matter how good it is, to sit six right. hours at a time. But the great thing on video is that you can live with these people over a day or two, and there's so over many people in this picture. Maybe. No, no. My goodness. There are 30 characters here who are incredibly vivid, you very well card. acted. You do need a scorecard, and that's understand. why you're doing it chapter by chapter is wonderful. But I, it's better on video. You can't sit around and gather around and let's see what happens now. They Why not? walk two more people walk Why into not? the room. That was almost a chase scene you that know, we saw. This for, is this is unbelievably boring. For people boring. who enjoy reading and who enjoy I going enjoy to reading. another world, and this is a whole other, other world. world of Victorian England with the taste and the feel and the smell of it. There's nothing like it in terms of capturing that entire world. I think people are going to get a terrific kick wake out of this video. Wake me when it's over. Well intentioned and Sir Alec Guinness and all that, but wake me when it's over. Well, next we look at new releases in family videos, and here we agree that the choice is easy. It's an old favorite in a wonderful new package, the 50th anniversary edition of The Wizard of Oz, a video worth buying, not just renting. With its original color superbly restored, this package also gives you extra material, like shots of Buddy Epson. He was the original Tin Man, and rare footage, too, that never appeared in the finished film. This video will make you remember, furthermore, the first time you wanted to follow the yellow brick road. Now the video also includes these astonishing shots of the jitterbug number, which wound up on the cutting room floor and was lost forever. But this grainy home movie version survives, thank goodness. Boy, I just love this, Jeff. I mean, with this anniversary edition, the colors just glow off the screen. I had the wonderful experience of watching this at home with my little daughter, who mm -hmm. isn't three years old yet. She loved it. And one of the best parts about it is, I mean, this is $24.95. And at that kind of price, this is one video I think that should be part of every home's permanent video library. You know what I found from this picture? It gave me a sense of where the film lies in the history of cinema. Because they have a promotional trailer. They have uh, scenes that weren't used. They have Judy Garland accepting her Special Academy Award. You really get that sense so as you say it is indeed something that deserves to be on your video shelf no question about it now we come to the comedy new releases and one of the titles with the most hype behind it this week draws our dreaded renter beware warning label and that's january man this is a lame-brained mystery comedy with kevin klein of all people that is one of the most annoying films <laughs> of recent months Please, save your time and your money. Well, there is a new comedy on video I can almost guarantee will have you laughing. However, it's called The Naked Gun. Leslie Nielsen is a bumbling L.A. police detective who here romances Priscilla Presley and tells her the sad tale of his previous love life. Boy finds girl, boy loses girl, girl finds boy. Boy forgets girl, boy remembers girl. Girl dies in a tragic blimp accident over the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day. Good year? No, the worst. You poor dear. Funny face. Ah, 
Ah, yes. Now, the movie revolves around a ludicrous plot to kill Queen Elizabeth during a state visit to a baseball game. And here, the cop disguises himself as an umpire and develops right. the most distinctive style behind the plate. <laughs> Jeff, I agree with you. This movie is shameless, it's adolescent, uh -huh. but it is also very, very funny. It's, of course, made by the same people who created Airplane, and it has the same kind of humor. I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't like some of the gags, because you know that 15 seconds later, there'll be another one coming along, and you may like that one better. But So in addition to recommending uh, The Naked Gun, where I joined Jeffrey, I'd like to recommend one other comedy, and that is a sweet little-known gem from director Carl Reiner. And this one is called Burt Rigby, You're a Fool, and it features Broadway star Robert Lindsay is a singing, dancing British coal miner who makes his way to Hollywood. And once he's there, he gets himself a job as a houseboy in the home of an important producer, and there he catches the eye of the producer's lonely wife, Anne Bancroft. I'd love to gain complete control of you and handle the heart and soul of you so love at least a small percent of me do cause I love all of you And isn't Anna Maria Italiano Brooks, better known as <laughs> Anne Bancroft, Oscar winner, isn't she wonderful here? And you know, you have to give Carl Reiner, also known these days perhaps as Rob Reiner's father, a lot of credit. He took an unknown from the London stage and later a Tony winner on Broadway, Robert Lindsay, and made him a star. And this guy has Danny Kay-like qualities, at least for me. The moment he starts to sing or dance or talk, you love him. Absolutely, so true. And the only mystery for me about Burt Rigby, You're a Fool, is why it never succeeded at the box office. I mean, here's a picture that had no audience out there. It played only in a few parts of the country, but now it's available on video, and I think you are going to find, if you rent it, that this is a glowing and affectionate tribute to all those wonderful old Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire musicals that Carl Reiner obviously loves, and everybody, pretty much everybody in the whole family can enjoy this thing. Well, I think you have said it, Mike. It didn't get a chance to play the hinterland, so to speak, and now, thank goodness, in this age of video, it has the chance to find its audience. Thank goodness is right. Now moving on. Next up, we have new releases that are direct to video. These are things, titles, that never played in theaters. And my admittedly oddball choice in this category is A Man Called Rainbow, which is, I will admit it, one of the most bizarre and idiotic tapes I have ever witnessed. And it stars Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> That's right. What happened here is that some maniacs got hold of the outtakes from a very early, terrible Stallone film, and then they recut it, dubbing in entirely new dialogue and adding some not-so-special effects, as you'll see. The result is totally unfair to Stallone, and it is also totally tasteless. But it is also very funny. Uh, you Private Prince, huh? the youngest ever military advisor to an enemy army, apparently snapped after listening to Al Pacino. The chipmunks sing the Beatles album 39 times backwards, where he reported hearing a message from either God or Timothy Leary, advising him to tune in, turn on, and drop out. 
Which he probably did. Immediately changed his name to Rainbow and appeared before his commanding officer start naked a homemade peace symbol hanging on his... Forcing his superior at gunpoint to, and I quote, fight the big one. Said to be armed and extremely dangerous and last seen in a stolen white Volkswagen bug. Rats, they're on. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Yo, I better ditch the car. Hey, didn't I read about you in Life magazine? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Well, right now I'm an escapee from the loony bin, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm going to be number one at the box office in about 15 years. Did you hear that, everyone? Banjo's gonna be number one at the box office. <laughs> it does put his career in some kind of bizarre perspective, Mike. You know, I found a little bit of this went a long way because Woody Allen did it better with What's Up, Tiger Lily, but it has its moments, I guess, particularly when you have such a jaded sense of humor as you have, Mike. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really, I think that Stallone seems to be showing a sense of humor about this thing, which is the only thing he can do. Yeah. I mean, this is a gross video. People have to be forewarned. There are about 15 jokes about stepping into doggy droppings. As I said, your sense of humor, just <laughs> geared for this man over here. <laughs> well, I must say, I loved it. And I think if, if you out there are demented enough to want this thing, you should know that the only problem with it is that it's hard to find it at any normal sane video store so if you still want it you should contact the people who produced it directly and that is section 8 video <laughs> very appropriately named p.o box 931897 hollywood california 90093 1897 and their phone number if you want to call them and i hope you do is well i can't imagine why is 213-871-2367 you have a great future reading lottery numbers. <laughs> uh, Mike, I don't know if Eddie Murphy can do an imitation of Sylvester Stallone, but wouldn't you like to see that just once? But he can do hilarious send-ups of a dozen other stars. Now, the proof in his video in our Made for Video section, Direct for Video, is the best of Eddie Murphy, Saturday Night Live, taken from his funniest bits on TV. Here you'll see a lot of familiar faces Sort of. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Jackson. Hi, I'm Buckwheat. Remember me? Tom Reagan's illegitimate son. I'm the greatest fighter of all time. Working for nub in all the wrong places. Working for nub. Sounds too good to be true. Just sent for my new book entitled, I Want to Be a Ho. Do you know what day it is? No. Girls, do you know what day it is? What day is it? You are right here. Right, I've been getting my protein. Have you, girls? I was the fifth beetle. I have proof. All right, what is that proof? Well, here's a photograph of us back in 1962. Boy, I didn't kick out the proof. <laughs> I am dark and you are light. You are blind as a bat. <laughs> I'm gonna get in the water. I'm gonna make the best out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I have to go now, boys and girls, so bye-bye. This tape is hilarious, and it may be heresy to say so, but I've got to admit, I think I may have enjoyed it even more than Eddie Murphy's movies. Okay, that's it for the new releases on video this week. Next up, we're going to talk about our picks of the new movies that just opened and are worth a trip to your local theater. But first, we want to tell you about our new Sneak Previews hotline for information on video and theatrical releases. When you call 1-900-IN-VIDEO, we'll offer seven titles in each of four different categories. You can choose video recommendations for families and children or new video releases, or even a grab bag of video surprises, or reviews of the new films now playing at your local theaters. That's 1-900-IN-VIDEO. For a call that costs $2 and supports Sneak Previews Goes Video on public television. And now we take a look at the new releases that have just opened in your local theater. Now this season, we're only going to be reviewing films that one or the other, perhaps both of us, think are worth a special trip. My choice this week is The Package. It's the newest Gene Hackman movie in which Hackman plays a career army sergeant who's unraveled a sinister plot to kill Gorbachev, no less, during the Russian leader's U.S. visit. Now, the plot's been hatched by rogue American and Soviet army officials to stop a disarmament treaty from being signed. And here, Hackman's in a tight spot with precious seconds ticking away. You can handle all, Sarge? No problem. This is I with the president. This 
see what this is gonna look like, Sarge. If you was one of the so-called conspirators. And they're trying to destroy evidence. You messed up. Do yourself up with it. Enjoy your milk and cookies, Sarge. Personally, I think I should blow the brains out the back of your head. What do you think? Jeff, I didn't like this picture quite as much as you did. The conspiracy here is so complicated and it's so paranoid that I don't think people are really going to buy it. But director Andy Davis, who also did Code of Silence and Above the Law, knows how to handle mm -hmm. action sequences. And those sequences, for me, save this picture. My own choice this week from the new movies just released in theaters is Relentless. Now, this is a low-budget underdog contender that could, I think, challenge Lethal Weapon 2 as the year's most gripping police action picture. It's full of convincing details as a rookie detective and a cynical partner try to stop a serial killer who's played by Judd Nelson, who here gives an eerie and effective performance that is easily the best work of his career. Police emergency, this is all. I can't buy this movie. This is a thriller without thrills and a suspense movie with no suspense. You know who the killer is from just about the first frame of the movie. And Judd Nelson looks like kind of a raccoon with big black rings around his oh. eyes, walking around with a zombie haircut. It's ridiculous. Okay, the fact is, I think that clip looks fairly suspenseful. And it's not supposed to be a whodunit. Why it's not? a police procedural. A what? It's uh, a police procedural. Uh -huh. It's a question New of form. how do you track down a serial killer with very few clues. And I think the psychological portrait of the killer is interesting and convincing for basically what is a low-budget formula movie. Emphasis on formula. Okay, right. now to summarize all of the titles we've covered this week. Under new releases in drama, we both recommend Rain Man. That, of course, is a superb movie with a sneak preview's violence rating of NV for little or no violence. As an additional possibility in drama, Jeffrey picks Beaches with Bette Midler, violence rated NV. And I recommend Little Dorrit with Alec Guinness, which we also rate NV for little or no violence. In family movies, we both strongly urge you to buy, not just rent, the marvelous new edition of The Wizard of Oz, which, of course, is violence rated NV. In the comedy section, we both like The Naked Gun, which has a violence rating of V for violent, though all of the mayhem here is comical. And we also both liked Burt Rigby, You're a Fool. That's Carl Reiner's sweet and lovable picture that we rate envy, little or no violence. And for direct-to-video, I recommend the very bizarre Sylvester Stallone release, A Man Called Rainbow, which is violence rated NV. And we both urge you to rent the best of Eddie Murphy's Saturday Night Live, which is racy and daring, but it's also NV for no violence. And finally, among new releases worth seeing at your local theaters, Jeffrey picked the Gene Hackman thriller, The Package, with an EV rating for extremely violent. And I've chosen another thriller, the police action picture, Relentless, which is also EV for its very chilling story of a serial murderer. And for our coveted renter beware warning label, one candidate this week. Stay away from the disastrous Kevin Klein, Susan Sarandon mystery comedy, The January Man, which isn't at all funny and is violence rated EV. It's extremely violent and extremely incompetent. So that's it for this debut edition of Sneak Previews Goes Video. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. And I'm Michael Medved. So until next week, don't forget to rewind that tape.